Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy... Turn that down. That's hurting my ears, and I'm not even in front of the speakers. New microphone, sorry. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the, your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray. Father, you sent your Son to bring us true, and your Spirit to make us holy. Open our hearts to exalt you. Open our lives to reveal you, our one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. Thanks be to God. We will read Canticle 13, the Song of Praise, responsibly. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. 
Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the children of God. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A woman wrote to Reader's Digest recently. She wrote about how the mind will erroneously fill in the blanks whenever it hears something it doesn't quite understand. She, was, she had just taken a young girl from India to church with her. It was the 11-year-old's first exposure to Christian worship. And when they returned home, the girl had a question. What I don't understand, she said, is why isn't the West Coast included? When the woman asked the girl what she meant by that, she said, well, you know, in the name of the Father and the Son and the whole East Coast. I can see why she was confused. There are some parts to our faith that are difficult to understand and to explain. And one of these is the doctrine of the Trinity. And if you find it a bit difficult to explain or understand yourself, you're in good company. St. Augustine, one of the most astute thinkers that our church ever produced, was walking along the seashore one day, just grappling with the whole idea of the Trinity, Father, Son, and the whole East Coast, when he seemed to hear a voice saying to him, go over by the shore and pick up one of those large shells. Well, he did. And then the voice said, now I want you to pour the entire ocean into that shell. He said, Lord, I can't do that. And then the thought hit him. Of course he couldn't. In the same way, how could his finite mind ever hold and understand the full mystery of the eternal, infinite, triune God? Well, this morning is Trinity Sunday. And churches of many brands and stripes and denominations around the world are going to be grappling with that mystery, the triune nature of God. And in a good many of these congregations, there will be sung the hymn, Holy, 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 God in Three Persons, Blessed Trinity, just as we have just done. Our Gospel lesson from the third chapter of the Gospel according to John this morning has Jesus, the Son, speaking of the Father and of the Spirit and of Himself. This passage, of course, contains John 3.16, a verse that many of us have committed to memory. At the end of it, we're told that Nicodemus doesn't really understand what Jesus is saying about Himself. In fact, he's drawing such a blank that Jesus seems to exclaim, What don't you understand? Well, as difficult as it is to understand, as difficult as it is to explain, we treasure this mystery of God because it stands at the heart of what we believe about God in Jesus Christ. 
So let's look for a few moments at what it says about God. It says first that God is beyond the categories by which we classify reality. As J.B. Phillips, the Bible translator, put it so well years ago, our God is too small. We limit God. Look around us. Truly, the heavens are declaring the glory of God, and the glory that they describe is breathtaking. In the year 150 BCE, by the way, that's what we're supposed to say now, not BC, but BCE, if you're being politically correct. At any rate, in the year 150 BCE, there was a man named Hipparchus who said that there were exactly 1,026 stars in the universe. He'd counted them all and got them all right. 1,026. Well, 1,500 years later, Galileo, using the newly invented telescope, looked into the sky and saw many times more than that. Today, we know that there are more than 100 billion stars just in our galaxy alone. And our galaxy is just one of billions of other galaxies. And what about our universe? How big is that? Well, in 1987, an astronomer observed with his naked eye the explosion of a distant supernova. The blast was so powerful that it released as much energy in one second as our sun does in 10 billion years. Now, what was truly startling about all this is that supernova exploded over 170,000 years ago. It took that long for the light that was generated by that faraway event traveling at nearly six trillion miles a year to reach the Earth. This week, Newsweek magazine had as their cover story the vastness of space, and it seems that the evidence is beginning to mount that the only workable explanation for why our universe is continuing to expand as it is without contracting is that it is interacting with potentially an infinite number of other universes. You know, it, it kind of gives credence to Buzz Lightyear's slogan, you know, from the Toy Story movies, to infinity and beyond. It's a line that's meant to get us chuckling, but uh, it seems that there may really be a beyond infinity. Can you imagine the magnitude of a God who is bigger than all of that? Is your God too small? Is your God big enough? You know, while we're on this, can you imagine a God for whom time does not exist? And we talk about forever and we joke around, forever, yeah, that's a long time. But that's not it at all. For God, there is no time. What was created, what is created, exists within what Einstein referred to as the time-space box. But God is not contained by it. For God, our tomorrows and our yesterdays are all present tense. Everything is now. Can you grasp that? Eternity is timeless. For, the, you know, for those of us who feel harried by the clock, heaven is really going to be heaven. In Los Angeles, there's a fossil museum next to the world-famous La Brea tar pits. And at the entrance of that museum is a painting of a ribbon that's 85 feet long. It represents five billion years of the Earth's history. One inch equals five million years. Do you know how much space the, that ribbon gives over to the human race? From the very beginnings of our earliest ancestors to the astronauts, just slightly over one quarter of an inch. And someone said, so what was God doing the other 84 feet, 11 and a quarter, three quarter inches? Time is a dimension by which we measure things, not God. 
Too many of us have a God who is too small. But God is beyond our imagining. When we say God in three persons, a mystery that defies human experience and even the syntax and structure of human language, we are affirming that God is beyond the categories by which we humans classify reality. Even more amazing, though, is something else that this mystery of the Trinity tells us. It says that this God, who is beyond our understanding, visited this planet in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. This is the heart of the Christian message. We are not deists. We do not believe that God just sort of set everything in motion and then walked away. We believe that God has visited our world in the life of a humble carpenter. And notice I did not say in the guise of a humble carpenter. I said in the life of a carpenter. Jesus was not God masquerading as a man. No, God emptied God's own self and became fully human when Christ was born in that manger in Bethlehem. He cried real tears and sweat and bled real blood. He was a real human. Yet God was in him, as Paul says, reconciling the world to himself. This too is beyond our comprehension. That the God of finite universes would become one of us and take up our weaknesses. Then again, God is God. God defies all our categories with which we are familiar. That is what the triune nature of God is saying to us. God is bigger than all our categories, and yet this infinite God loves this infinitesimal earth. You and me so much as to walk among us bone of our bone, flesh of our flesh, blood of our blood. There's one more thing the mystery of the Trinity tells us. It tells us that this same God who created and in Christ suffered and died, this same God is present to every one of us right now. That's what we mean when we talk about the work of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit whom we celebrated this past Sunday. God is present. God is our comforter, our Savior, our sustainer, and our friend. God is here, now. There's a story going around in some circles right now about a conversation that supposedly occurred between President Obama and Bibi Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel. In one of their more cordial moments, Netanyahu noted the three phones that sat upon the President's desk in the Oval Office. And he asked, what exactly are all these phones for? The President replied that, well, one of them went directly to Capitol Hill so he could keep an ear tuned to what was going on there. The red one, of course, he said, was still, uh, it still went directly to Moscow. It was a holdover from the Cold War days. The third, the President said, was the presidential direct line to God. Really? responded Netanyahu. So uh, what exactly does a call like that cost you to make? One million dollars, said the president, but it's worth every penny. Well, a few days later, the president was on the phone to Netanyahu, who was back in Jerusalem, and the prime minister at some point said, by the way, I also have three phones on my office desk. Really, said Obama. Well, what do they do? Well, said, the first goes to the Knesset, the second goes to Cairo, and the third one is my direct line to God. Wow, said the president. So uh, what does it cost you to make a call from there? Said Netanyahu, just 10 cents. It's a local call.
the triune nature of God says that this same God of the infinite universe who emptied himself and walked the dusty roads of Galilee is a local call. God is here. When we can't go on, God is our sustainer. When we're heartbroken, God is our encourager. When we have wandered far from the path of righteousness, God is our Savior. Everything we need, we find in Him. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us confess our trust in this infinite, triune God. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under conscious power. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. To the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will use Form 6 for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alive. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel, and all who seek the truth. For Rowan, Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael, Chip, and William, our bishops, for Rick and Bob, our priests, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we especially pray for Charles Bob Robinson, Bob Silk, Anita Graves, John Moore, Cassie Justice, 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 Stacy Dalton Hearn, Gene Tyson. Mary 
their distress. And we also pray for all those serving in the armed forces of our nation, especially Randy Williamson, Barney Briggs, Ethan Rogers, Owen Underhaar, Heather Meyer, Dominic Diaz, Amanda Altman, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepard, Edward Morrell, Wesley Welsh, Spencer Wilson, Ralph Lee Clay, Patty Decay, Rachel Smith Porter, Dee Curran, Christina Johnson, Carl Stetzer, Bobby Bay, Adam Wilson, Tommy Mancini, Tom Horn, that they may be kept in harm and shielded in danger. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And we pray for those celebrating birthdays this week. Bruce Smith, Joanne Piazza, Ben Fraser. Lord, we thank you. you. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially John Warner, who died this past week, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. to celebrate this day in the lives of some of our young people. We have uh, three high school graduates and three post-graduate graduates uh, to celebrate. And uh, I would like to ask if, I would like to ask Joshua Elliott, Jeffrey Hagler, and Sidney Meltzer to come on up here. Well, Jeffrey, you're already up here, but come down here. Yeah. I'm just having fun. Jeffrey uh, has, is graduated from, uh, well has graduated, excuse me, from Reedsville High School and is intending to attend Appalachian State, I believe, this uh, next year. Uh, Sydney is uh, has also graduated from Reedsville High School and will be attending William Pierce College. Right? He, William, oh, William Peace. I've heard of William Pierce. I haven't heard of, okay, never mind. William Peace College. 
Thank you. And uh, Joshua Elliott has graduated from Caldwell Academy and is intending to take a gap year and then uh, go on to UNC and Be uh, Pembroke. And uh, we also have, I'll mention them, uh, our three postgraduates, none of whom can be here because they're all interning. Thank God, you know, they seem to get employed. Uh, Jim Doniker, who's got his uh, uh, medical doctorate and is now in San Diego and getting ready to intern at the Naval Hospital there. Uh, Liz Fulton, who has gotten her JD degree from Charleston School and I understand has taken up an internship somewhere. Uh, I, I didn't get the exact, uh, excuse me, Fulton, yeah, uh, I'm not exactly sure where. Is it, is it exactly where? Wow, okay, good. And uh, Megan Miles, definite, definitely a relation of ours, of ours um, who is, uh, has, is getting her uh, PhD in neuroscience uh, from the University of Southern California and uh, is, is still has to defend her dissertation that she's doing next month. Uh, we hope and pray. Anyway, and uh, also has a job offer. So that's really good. Uh, yay. So, we're glad to hear about that last part, but in honor of this time, we wanted to give you these Bibles to take with you. These are fairly easy reading Bibles, that's a hint, uh, because we're hoping that you really will read them. Uh, this, and they have your names inscribed on them, Joshua, this one is for you, and Sidney, this one is for you, and Jeffrey, this one is for you. Congratulations, you guys. This is Can we all pray the prayer that's printed there in the bulletin in recognition of our graduates to bless them and send them on their way? Let's pray. Father, in your will for our lives to live, and by your wisdom, truth is found. We pray for these graduates who have finished their course of study and now move on to something new. Take away anxiety or confusion of purpose and give them confidence in the future you plan, where energies may be gathered up and given to neighbors in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Yeah, uh, I've just been told, by the way, for, for you grads, please stick around at the end of the service because Tom needs a picture of you because we want to put it in the, uh, in, the uh, in the newsletter. So, you know, we are, we are getting out early today, by the way, so you can stick around for a couple minutes, okay? <laughs> Speaking of which, thank you. I, this is wonderful to see all of you here this morning. We really were sort of wondering exactly how many folks we were going to see with this new early schedule for the summer. Uh, and it's, it's great to see so many of you out here and to see so many of the choir in the congregation, despite the fact you didn't have to be. So <laughs> uh, it's wonderful. And the sound that's coming from the congregation up here is just wonderful to hear. It really is glorious. I hope that you will take time to look at the announcements that are in the back of the bulletin. Uh, Please notice that we are still continuing to stream a live service. The 11 o'clock service, however, is being streamed at 10. Also, I just make a little... Oh, and by the way, I just thought I'd mention it. Don, congratulations on your new commission to the Army. It's a joke. You saw he was showed up in the military. We said to add him to the prayer list, and he got added to the military instead of the other. <laughs> instead of the other. So, no, Don is not going off somewhere into the military, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we do have our flower chart uh, calendar. Uh, during the summer, we're still taking flowers for the altar, and uh, if you would like to do that, the flower chart is back there. You can sign your name up for a particular Sunday, and uh, we'll see to it that that's mentioned in the service. Any other announcements to make this morning?
Good? Oh. What what is your son's name again? Nathan. Okay, Nathan has just graduated from where? North Carolina A and T. English and African American literature. All right. Okay. All right. And, and he has a job. And he has a job. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. So we have four gradu postgraduate graduates. Okay, that's wonderful. That's a good track record. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons, and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, to your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, 
resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power of the Lord, forever and ever. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>